seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. On July 16, 1969, at 8.32 a.m., Apollo 11 lifted off. This would be the first mission to land on the moon, and possibly the most important um, space mission ever. This time, on this mission, Neil Armstrong, the commander, Buzz Aldrin, the lunar module pilot, and Michael Collins, the command module pilot, were going to go and get into orbit around the moon, and then land on the moon. This would be the mission that would finally accomplish President John F. Kennedy's goal that he set for the, U for the United States back in 1961, that they would get to the moon before the end of the decade. The, they, on this um, mission, they would finally beat the Russians to the moon. The Apollo 11 launch went, as, went according to plan, or er, went as planned, and they got into orbit successfully. On, the, on this launch, the, the crew members' heart rates never even exceeded normal. <laughs> they stayed normal the entire time, which is amazing. In fact, the only time that they actually like went above normal was when they actually landed on the moon and they were already on the moon. <laughs> Which is amazing that they weren't even like completely just like excited. <laughs> or they were excited, but like they didn't freak out. <laughs> so this is just a norm, this is pretty much the same as all the other Saturn V launches. And it's amazing because within. Like, even where we are now, just on the third stage, the entire vehicle is just the third stage in the spacecraft. It's a lot smaller than it was. <laughs> and we're going to do our translunar injection to burn to the moon. The command service module was built by Rockwell International, and the lunar module was built by Grumman. This is it was only a little or it was only a few or six months after Apollo eight first went to the moon and the first time and humans ever even went to the moon. <laughs> Which is amazing how fast that took that went. And now they are going to dock and then they will get rid of the third stage. So we're turning around to align ourselves with the docking port of the lunar module, or the LIM, as they called it. <laughs> and then we will start our three-day drift to the moon. And we're doing a quick fuel transfer, transfer just so we don't waste fuel. They did not actually do that in real life, but the fuel tanks were full. And now we're going to do our mid-course correction burn soon so we don't crash into the moon like third stage does. Because we do not want to crash into the moon because that's bad. And there we go. We're on track to get into a good orbit around the moon. We're time warping to the moon, and um, here we go. We're about to turn around to do our trans or our lunar orbit insertion burn. This burn, if they missed it or if the engine didn't work, they would still get home, but they'd miss their opportunity to get at the moon. 
probably the only burn more important than this was the burn that would actually get them back home, the trans-Earth injection burn. If that one failed, they'd get stuck at the moon forever. So the command module, it's using its service propulsion system engine to get into a circular-ish orbit around the moon, and then we'll do a mid, we'll do an orbital correction burn soon. <laughs> There's the third stage there, crashing into the moon, and let's see if we can see our space station or one of them that's here. Nope, I can't really see it, but there's the moon. And we're looking for it again, <laughs> even though it's past us. So now we're in a good lunar orbit, and we are going to land in the Sea of Tranquility, which is where Apollo 11 actually landed. Right now it's facing the Earth on the moon in Space Flight Simulator. Because <laughs> this map is if you were looking down at the moon from the top of the moon. So if you ever look at the moon, yeah, like that, and you see like the big, the big gray, like darker gray spots, I'm pretty sure that's where the Sea of Tranquility is. It is where the Sea of Tranquility is because the seas are, when the moon was created, it was really hot and there was a lot of lava. So the seas, the reason they're darker is because they're cooled lava beds. And we call them seas because they're a lot flatter than the rest of the moon. Like the lighter gray parts typically have more craters, I'm pretty sure. And so we're doing our descent, our first, or our descent burn to get out of orbit or a deorbit burn, whatever you would call that. <laughs> We're using our descent stage here. The lunar module was, was split into two stages, one for landing on the moon and one for getting off of it. If the landing one failed, then they would abort the lunar landing by detaching and going in, and using the ascent stage to get back up and dock. But if the ascent stage failed when they were getting off the moon, they would be trapped there forever. Sounds beautiful. <laughs> that would not be good if they got trapped on the moon. So we're doing our descent burn. And so Apollo 11, they kind of got went a bit further downrange than they meant to. And they almost crashed right into a giant crater, which is about, which is what you're about to see. And yeah, see right there, the giant crater. And if you've seen the movie First Man, you remember that scene when they're landing on the moon and they fly over that giant crater and the music kind of gets louder and stuff? That's what this is. So we're doing our maneuver to kind of avoid that crater because we don't want to land in a crater. Especially the real one was like really deep too and it would be really dangerous to try to land in there. And, yeah, you don't want to land in there. The pit of doom. So we need to kind of hover over the crater and not expend too much fuel. This lunar module is quite a bit more efficient or has a bit more fuel than the actual lunar module because it's the... The descent stage is literally a giant fuel tank with an engine and landing legs. But in real life, they literally only had like a few seconds of fuel left when they landed, which is crazy that they landed safely. Like Neil Armstrong himself calculated that they only had a 50% chance of making a successful landing. So we're coming down for our final landing here. When Apollo 11 landed, they were something like two miles downrange, which is crazy. Okay, so we're about to land. Three hundred thirty meters. Oh, we're going up. We're hovering over this crater. We don't want to crash into that crater. We want to find somewhere flat to land.
You can see the ground is darker because we're in one of the seas. Okay, we found somewhere to flat to land. And we're going to come in for a nice soft touchdown. Now when they actually were about to land, they kicked up a ton of lunar dust, which actually kind of messed, like they couldn't see as, as well, which that was like another problem. And tons of alarms and stuff were going off with like the computers. But they bet Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin still landed it successfully, which is amazing. And then they got out and they did their spacewalks. Or their moonwalks. <laughs> the first humans to walk on the moon. And then Neil Armstrong did his favorite speech, or his famous speech. That's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. The reason that most that you don't normally hear the A is because there were you, there were radio issues. Because he says that he said A. <laughs> and so now we're doing our ascent stage to get back up to the moon. By now they would have done their space their moonwalks. And gotten back in, and they're flying it up to the command service module to dock. As I said before, if this burn failed, they would be trapped forever. So we're raising our apoapsis to get a close approach to it, but it doesn't look like we'll get it on the first orbit but we'll be close. Now, in real life, the descent engine and the ascent engine could only be fired once, but they throttled it so it would, like, not use up a ton of fuel and so they could do what they, like, how they wanted it to do. But we restart the engine and stuff on this. <laughs> but that's how Mafia works. Okay, we're about to dock. Time warping a bit to get in close. And there's our buddy Michael in the CSM. So we're gonna burn towards it to get close, then we're gonna burn away from it to slow it down, or to slow us down, so we don't crash into it, because that would not be good. You know, today, um, Apollo, er, April 13th, April 11th, the 49th anniversary of the Apollo 13 launch, but today is the 49th anniversary of the explosion on Apollo 13. So I'll be making a video about that later. Okay, so we're coming in close. Time working a bit. There it is. Hey, Michael. So we're going to slow ourselves down and then line up with the docking ports again. So we're just getting in close. Oop, don't want to crash. <laughs> We're using our RCS thrusters to maneuver ourselves. We're lining up and go close. And slow ourselves down and there we go. We're docked. So now the astronauts would transfer back into the capsule, then they'd get rid of the ascent stage because they don't need that anymore. You'll see we'll deorbit that in a second, and it'll crash into the moon for science to test those seismometers, which Apollo 11, I'm pretty sure they did not leave any seismometers. I think Apollo 12 is the one who left those. So there wouldn't have been any science gain from this yet, but next mission. <laughs> And we're going to prepare to do our trans-Earth injection, which this is the burn that will get us back home. We need this to work.
And so we're going to orient ourselves with the RCS, and luckily the window is pretty close to us and we don't have to make any extra orbits. So we're going to start up our service propulsion system. There we go. And get a good reentry angle. We have to hit that target that's the size of a piece of paper if the Earth were a basketball. Here we go. I'd say that's a pretty good reentry angle. Quick save here, and we'll fly back, or float, drift, whatever you would say, <laughs> back. <laughs> we'll go back to Earth. So here they would just like prepare for, right here they'd prepare for the re-entry and pretty soon we'll jettison our service module because we don't want that to be attached still because if that's attached it's not fireproof like our heat shield or it's not heat proof like our heat shield is. We need to go in heat shield pointing first. If we went in with that service module it would probably get burned off and it would probably take the rest of the capsule with it. So we're just getting rid of that. And we'll time warp and do our re-entry. Okay, we're re-entering now. This is where the fire would start, or the plasma and fire would start to build up and we'd lose our signal. Here was probably one of the most suspenseful parts of the mission other than the um, lunar, insertion, lunar orbit insertion burn because we lose contact on both of those because the lunar insertion burn was on the other side of the moon. But this also you kind of want to know, are, are the astronauts being burned up or are they safe? But you have to wait till you get the reacquisition of signal. So around here is probably when the drug shoots would deploy, but we don't, there aren't really drug shoots in this game. <laughs> those would slow us down a bit before we deploy the main parachutes so those don't get ripped off. Three thousand meters. And we'll deploy our parachutes here soon. Our main parachutes. But they will only half deploy because we're too high. They'll fully deploy in a bit. There we go. Main parachutes deployed. Oh, here's the blueprint, and here's a picture of the launch of Apollo 11. It's actually from the documentary of Apollo 11. Here's one of the, here's Buzz Aldrin or Neil Armstrong on the moon, and here's Buzz Aldrin being taken a picture of by Neil Armstrong. Like and subscribe.